As we enter 2014, the economic numbers look better. So why are many of you so pessimistic about the economy? This is Special Report. Good evening, I'm Brett Baer. Happy New Year. We begin tonight with the juxtaposition between what the numbers say about the U.S. economy and what you say about it. The most recent statistics suggest things are improving, but that's not how the public is perceiving it. And that's a political problem for President Obama. White House correspondent Wendell Gohler is traveling with the president in Hawaii. The president says job creation is one of his top priorities for the new year, and with unemployment at 7 percent, it's understandable why. But the jobless rate has steadily fallen. The latest figures show manufacturing continues to expand, and construction spending was up again last month. Despite that, the latest CNN ORC poll suggests more than two-thirds of the country think the economy's in poor shape, and a non-scientific survey of people on the street supports that. I view 2013 as us being in survival mode and just kind of flattening out to a little bit of normalcy without the crash and without the big uptake. Some experts blame a disconnect between Wall Street, which has soared since the end of the recession, and Main Street, which has not. Well, there's a lot of folks that have not gotten their old jobs back, or if they have got a job back, they are not making the money that they used to make prior to the 2008 recession. Scott Martin says normal unemployment may no longer be 4 or 5 percent. It may be closer to 6. And other experts say persistent White House optimism may come at a price. People have been told at the end of every year for the last several that next year is going to be the year that things get really better. The economy has improved, but it's far from healthy. In fact, the president and his advisors have more than one message. One is that the economy is fundamentally sound and getting better. Another is that the long-term unemployed need a renewal of benefits that expired with the new year. Even with the economy improving at 7% unemployment and with the high degree of long-term unemployment we face as a country, this is not the time to cut off these families who are using this as a temporary lifeline. Many people who are working also felt last year's expiration of the payroll tax cut. I've noticed the taxation is taking a larger chunk out of my paycheck. Uh, last year I saw it go to about 25 to 30 percent. This year Congress has failed to renew a package of 55 tax cuts for individuals and businesses including companies that invest in research and development and teachers who spend their own money for supplies. Lawmakers may eventually approve them retroactively to the start of the year as they have in the past but economists hate the uncertainty. I think that if Congress could stop this stop-go business where you have a tax credit, it's on, it's off again, that would probably help the economy. And there is some hope, I'm not saying a lot, that, that they'll settle that early in the year. David Wessel may be optimistic. The last time the tax breaks expired was at the end of 2011. Congress eventually renewed them retroactively, but not until New Year's Day of 2013. Brett? Wendell Goler in a sunny Honolulu. Wendell, thank you. Wall Street experienced its first negative start to a year since 2008 today. The Dow plunged 135. The S&P 500 was down 16. The Nasdaq lost 33 and a half. A little more evidence on just how pessimistic you are tonight. A new Associated Press poll finds 70 percent of Americans have no confidence that the government can accomplish anything significant in its current condition. Much of that skepticism is probably due to the Obamacare rollout. Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel tells us how that's going. Eleven GOP attorneys general signed on to this letter today accusing the administration of breaking the law by making numerous changes to Obamacare bypassing Congress. And in this memo sent by the House Majority Leader to Republican members, Eric Cantor raised security concerns related to the healthcare.gov website following the high-profile data breach involving Target stores. Cantor cites an Experian report which says, quote, the health care industry by far will be the most susceptible to publicly disclosed and widely scrutinized data breaches in 2014, a concern Cantor raised last month. The administration has tried to hide the security problems that exist uh, with the website that one official called limitless prior to the website's launch. The Obama administration must respond to Justice Sonia Sotomayor's emergency stay of the controversial contraception mandate of Obamacare by 10 a.m. tomorrow. 
Sotomayor, who was appointed by President Obama, temporarily blocked the requirement that some religious affiliated organizations provide their workers with insurance that includes birth control. An attorney representing the Little Sisters of the Poor talked about their concerns. They say, listen, we've been a Catholic organization for 175 years. We're nuns. And we can't turn around and start disrespecting life at its earliest phases by paying for and participating in the provision of drugs and devices that can take innocent human life. Administration officials say all the nuns need to do is sign a certification opting out and no contraception coverage is required. But Little Sisters worries the government may force some third party to provide it. That's what hopefully the Supreme Court will not allow. Much of the rest of Obamacare launched yesterday, including the individual mandate. The administration says 2.1 million consumers have enrolled through federal and state exchanges. It is a new day for millions of Americans who are still signing up uh, for new quality affordable health care options through the federal and state marketplaces uh, or through Medicaid. Um, and already seeing the benefits of the new health care law. But in most cases, they have until January 10th to pay for it, and House Energy and Commerce Chairman Fred Upton says he wants that number. Time will tell in the next couple weeks as to the providers, the hospitals, the physicians, in terms of whether people are actually, that show up or actually get uh, payments are, are going to be made, how many people actually are going to write the check to get into the system. Majority Leader Cantor told his Republican colleagues the House will take up security breach legislation next week. A spokesman for Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi says the House GOP remains focused on repealing or undermining the president's health care law. Meanwhile, CMS, the Medicare agency, says consumers should trust their personal information is protected. Brett? Okay, Mike, thank you. Emergency room staff might want to get ready for a big surge in business. A new study published in the journal Science shows previously uninsured people given coverage through Medicaid use the ER 40% more than people not in the program. As you know, millions of Americans are gaining insurance this week from Obamacare, many of them through Medicaid. The family of the California teenager declared dead after complications from tonsil surgery is getting some help tonight. A foundation started by the family of Terry Shivo says it is trying to arrange for Jahai McMath to be moved to a long-term care facility. Shivo was at the center of a multi-year right-to-die fight that ended with her removal from a feeding tube over the objection of her parents. Another case of exactly when someone should be allowed to die is making news and testing the law in Texas. Correspondent Molly Henneberg has that story tonight. Doctors say Marlise Munoz, seen here with her husband and son, is brain dead in a Texas hospital. She collapsed in November, likely from a clot in her lung. Her parents and husband want her taken off of life support. But the state of Texas won't allow it because Marlise is about five months pregnant and the baby's heart is beating. A Texas law says doctors, quote, may not withdraw or withhold life-sustaining treatment from a pregnant patient. And that trumps what the family says was Marlise's wish not to be kept alive artificially. Marlise's mother, Lynn Machado, tells Fox in an interview, quote, We know our daughter wouldn't want this. My husband and I had numerous talks with her. We were all floored when we found out about the law. But supporters of the law, including Bobby Schindler, the brother of Terry Schiavo, who fought against having her feeding tube removed in 2005 in a controversial Florida legal battle, says the family can honor Marlise's wishes to be taken off life support after the baby is born. Texas law is, 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 is giving the benefit of the doubt, uh, in this case, to, to the unborn baby. And, uh, and we must do that. Uh, we must protect the, the, the lives of, of, of unborn children. And in fact, um, uh, uh, as I said, I, I can't imagine any mother would want to end the life of their baby. The hospital says its hands are tied. For us as the hospital system, there is no option. We have to follow the law as it applies in the state of Texas. Marlisa's husband, Eric Munoz, has said he does not know how long the baby was without oxygen when his wife collapsed and what problems the baby might have as a result. But Bobby Schindler says while his heart breaks for the family, the state of Texas has a responsibility to give that baby a chance to be born. Marlisa's family says they're going to try to get the law changed. Brett? Molly, thank you. Well, what do you think should be done with these types of cases? Let me know at Facebook.com slash Brett Bear SR or on Twitter at Brett Bear. You can use the hashtag special report. Still ahead, how the U.S. aims to destroy Syria's chemical weapons. 
But first, here's what some of our Fox affiliates across the country are covering tonight. KTVU in Oakland with the California Supreme Court granting a law license to a man living in the U.S. illegally who graduated from law school and passed the state bar exam. KRIV in Houston on the hospitalization of the former first lady and first mom, Barbara Bush. She's being treated for a respiratory condition. Her husband, the former president, 41, tweeted out a thank you today. Quote, Barbara thanks Barack Obama and Bill Clinton for their get well wishes and is heeding their advice. Doesn't happen with every president she knows. And this is a live look at Boston from our Fox affiliate WFXT. The big story there tonight, you may see it there on the screen, a major winter storm. Said to be on the way, we will go live to our own Molly Line in Beantown after the break. That's tonight's live look outside the Beltway from Special Report. We'll be right back.